Hi, this is Nemesis, and welcome to a Let's Play of Halo 3. This came out on September 25th, 2007, and at the time, it once again broke sales records that were set by Halo 2, which stood for another two years until Modern Warfare 2 came out. So anyway, right now, I am setting up my profile, even though I do not need to do that, but anything beyond um, changing my control sensitivity. But right now I'm just showing you how you can be Spartan or Elite, and they also add, introduced in Halo 3 custom armor beyond color. They added armor pieces, of course, you have to unlock them, most of them. The only things that are unlocked when you first start are default Mark 6 and CQB. So I'm just changing my symbol and colors and all that, needlessly, again, because... One, I just like doing it, and two, it gives me time to talk here before the opening movie. And they also added a third color that it's just a stripe on your leg, but that disappears again in ha remaining halos because it was kind of pointless. They also changed the gradient to a uh, middle thing. And they also introduced a little thing where you can change your voice for multiplayer, but. That's all it did was just change your voice, so and here I go. I picked normal once again, and we're going to start with Arrival, the Arrival cutscene followed by Sierra 117. So sit back and enjoy the cutscene. They let me pick. Did I ever tell you that? Choose whichever Spartan I wanted. You know me. I did my research. Watched as you became the soldier we needed you to be. Like the others, you were strong and swift and brave. A natural leader. But you had something they didn't. Something no one saw but me. Can you guess? Luck. Was I wrong? This ain't good. Damn. How far did he fall? Two kilometers. Easy. Stay sharp. Gorman? His armor's locked up. Gel layer could have taken most of the impact. I don't know, Sergeant Major. Radio for Vitam. Heavy lift gear. We're not leaving him here. Yeah, you're not. Oh, crazy fool. Why do you always jump? One of these days, you're gonna land on something as stubborn as you are. And I don't do bits and pieces. Where is she, Chief? Where's Cortana? Don't make a girl a promise, if you know you can't keep it. She stayed behind. Corporal, make it quick. Sorry, sir. Your armor's still in partial lockdown. Look up here, sir. Typical okay. tutorial. Or not tutorial, but just now down here. look check. And Good. then... That's it, so I'm gonna be quiet again. Everything checks out, Sergeant Major. Up. Kick off the training wheels, Corporal. He's good to go.
feet. Wait. The Arbiter's with us. Come on now. We've got enough to worry about without you two trying to kill each other. Were it so easy? We must go. The brutes have our scent. Then they must love the smell of green. So that bit right there, First Sergeant squad, Johnson's line is different depending on Move what out. difficulty you're playing. And once again, Arbiter has been played by Keith David. So, yeah, this was Bungie's first title for the 360. So there's a remarkable jump between Halo 2 and Halo 3. And, of course, right, as you can see, Halo 3 brought about the return of the assault rifle, though slightly different. It's now only got a 32 round clip instead of a 60 round. Or the magazine. I don't know. Yeah, but it's only going to hold 32 rounds instead of this old 60. That sounded close. Yeah, too close. So, a lot of people complain that Halo 3's graphics weren't that good, and here's the Johnson, thing. You'd be advised. At the time when it came out, they were I've got eyes on a For Say all again, the Gunny, faults it had, they did one thing in particular very, very well, and that was lighting. The lighting in Halo 3 is absolutely amazing. Sergeant the Major, only problem was, Phantom inbound. the way they did it was expensive to render, together, so... Inspired. It came at the Let's expense of a lot of other things, so there's no AA, or almost no AA, and sometimes, like, in particular, facial animations look really, or not animation, the facial modeling looks really weird. Mate, models and textures look really weird for faces in particular. Other things look great, but other, it's just... This is one of those games where the graphics oh, did not age as well as, like, other games of the time. Oh, and here's a new pistol. Slow rate of fire, but it's hit, it's kind of powerful and it's headshot capable. I want hot barrels, people. Keep it up. <laughs> so it's a little bit better than the Halo. It's better than Halo 2 pistol, but it's nowhere near as good as the Halo 1 pistol. But you are fools to do their bidding. I don't know why the arbiter's talking to dead bodies because they can't hear him, but whatever. So yeah, in this game, another big change was the Brutes replaced the Elites, basically. They changed up the Brutes a lot between Halo 2 and Halo 3, so that now they're a lot more interesting to fight. You want some hey. the, the, the Brutes now have this power armor, which acts a lot like what well, the um, Elite Shields did. And, of course, that also means that well, if you have a plasma pistol, it will drop their power armor. And here's a new weapon, the Brute Spiker. It's basically like their, the Brute equivalent of an SMG. It fires a little bit slower, but the rounds are a little bit more powerful as well. So It's also got one nasty melee because of those spikes of their blades at the end of it. When we are victorious, but occasionally the in these, I do do wield. And here I am talking over the arbiter again. Shame on me. Yeah. So once again, flashlight, no meter or anything. It's, it's now it's attached to your D-pad and not like white and black buttons. Because white and black buttons have been replaced with the shoulder buttons on the 360 pad. And they also changed the default control scheme because now in this RB is reload and getting vehicles and all that. And X does something new, which you'll see in a little bit. Oh, I don't know what happened there. Sleepers. 
Take him up. Nice I think score. I may like just stop short just because, well. I always got used to the Halo 2's ridiculous plunge. And so I'm there's a few times in particular in this video where I miss a melee just because I pressed the button too early because I got used to that ridiculous lunge for Halo 2. And another thing you might notice is the shield bar has been moved from above the motion tracker to the top of the screen, and that's pretty much where it stays for the rest of the series. And you notice I picked something up and an icon just appeared below my grenade counter. That's related to the new X button function, which I'll show in a little bit. Right about here, I think. Yeah, so X deploys equipment, which you can pick up. Right now, I just deployed the bubble shield, which is, well, a little protective canopy that deflects projectiles. And, well, that's it. It project deflects projectiles. Oh, and here's the new needler. Not dualable like Halo 2, because they increased the power of it by quite a bit. Unfortunately, these grunts are dying too easily for me to show you an explosion with it. Pelicans are en route, Chief, but I can't raise Bravo. If you find them, get them to the extraction point. Tell me its location. Kiss. Oh, no. oh. Yeah, I probably just heard a sniff just because I still have a bit of a cold and it's going away at the time of this recording, but... Killed my men. Yeah. There is a new weapon right the there. I'm not gonna switch to it a little bit. I think I wanted to show the Neither Super Combine first or something. Or not. I just gone no, as Jackals first. So yeah, that's the new battle rifle again. Um, slight redesign over the Halo 2 version. But it still performs pretty much the same. Although, Halo 2's was a hit scan. Halo 3's is not. You have to lead your shots if the um, guy's moving. Plus, there's now a bit of a spread to the bullets to keep it balanced so you can't just um, use that as a sniper rifle. And of course, the player base hated that. No, I'm waiting for them for a reason. Could you sacrifice me to complete your mission? Could you watch me die? Sir, you okay? Your vitals just ping KIA. So that was one of many, many interruptions by Cortana that we get, which is part of the reason a lot of people hey, feel the Halo 3 the campaign is nowhere not company. as good as the others. Because what happens is she'll interrupt you, everything just slows down while she talks, and then it goes back to normal. And here we get our grenade here. Hold on, got a contact. The grenade tutorial of the first level. Just give you a bunch of grenades and then tell you to throw them. Or encourage you to throw them. Break off, now! Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't do it in this video, but right here, you can actually walk in the water, for underwater for a bit. It's kind of funny to just walk it under the water and you're fine, as long as you don't go too far away from the shore. Right there, and you want to go Other places, if you try to go underwater, you will die. It's because the game has deemed those, uh, no. And here's the problem, also. I deploy a bubble shield here pretty soon because I got used to pressing X to reload in Halo 2 and 1 and 2. So I go to reload and, oh, whoops, I forgot. So since they switched it up on me, I forgot that that's what it did, so I kept pressing X to reload. And then, so that, I think that doesn't happen as often later, but I get used to it again, but still, it's kind of annoying. And then when Reach comes around, they put the X back on, reload is back on X, so then I get confused again. Oh, 
here I pick up the new version of the Brute Shot, which rather it's a six round. It's got six rounds now. They're slightly less powerful than they were in Halo 2, but I think you can fire them faster too. Still got a bit of a kick to it, that's for sure. Will return. Hurry, back into the jungle. Like I said, lighting amazing. Other stuff not so much. Some of the texture work is pretty good. Other times it's like really. But it's definitely a more monster improvement over Halo 2. For one, no more texture popping, no more model popping. They got rid of that because they brought back the loading screen. Stay low. Looks like they got carbines. Yeah. In this section. Sometimes the jackal on higher difficulty, sometimes the jackals will have, or usually will have, sniper rifles as well, so that can be fun. And here I decided to switch out the brute, the. I thought I oh, okay, there, yeah, I did. Yeah, I switched out the brute shot for a carbine. Which pretty much performs exactly the same as it did in Halo 2. They really didn't change much, except it now is a bit more of a spread if you fire faster. The faster you fire, the more of a spread there is. Which, you know, because it makes sense, because you got the, the battle rifle's got a set firing rate, but this thing you can pretty much pull the trigger just ridiculously fast. And I remember the beta, Halo 3 multiplayer beta, this thing was lethal. You just, if you had a choice between this and the battle rifle, you picked this because it could fire faster and it was ridiculously accurate. So you could tear someone apart really quickly. Oh, another change they made from here, Halo 2 to 3, is you only carry two of each type of grenade. In Halo 1 and 2, you could carry four of each kind. Here they dropped it down to two. And part of the reason is they introduced a new grenade type, which we don't see until the next video, I think. Right. Yeah, we don't see the new grenade type until the next level, and I'll talk about it there. And yeah, so yeah, this basically this level just introduces you to all the new elements of Halo 3, or if you're just new to Halo in general, it just introduces you to the elements of Halo. But the good thing is we get to pick up a sniper rifle really quickly. Echo five one, please respond. Focus, five one is down. Yeah, you gotta be careful, Marines. Once again, you still gotta be careful, Marines, throwing grenades because they can hurt, kill you. Because sometimes they're not paying attention to where you're th they're throwing the grenades. Sergeant Major went this way, Chief, through the cave. See how they bait their trap? I will help you spring it. So that is actually a new kind of cutscene they had, which was if you decide to skip it, which I didn't, the actions that you see in the cutscene continue happening while you when you start playing. So what happens is if you skip it. You can actually then look over and you'll still see the events happen um the brute like pushing Johnson into that um building over there. We're gonna get you, 
in the first sniper shot of the game, I completely whiff it. Watch it because I'm being fired on constantly, but also partially because I got a bit rusty. Again. Why? Because I've been playing a lot of Forza. So, racing games and not sniping. Or is it Forza? Anyway, yeah, that's pretty irrelevant. Man. Still trying to remember exact the exacts about, you know, grenade throwing arcs. Doesn't help that in ODST they completely change the throwing arc on you, so all of a sudden it's just weird. Then you have to get used to it all over again. Back, so. Used to the right one. And of course, plasma pistol. Yeah, if I actually hit a brute there, you would have seen his power armor explode off his body. But I did not hit because he dodged. And there's a reason I took that chieftain out really very quick. There's a reason I took him out very quickly. One, he had a hammer, which is lethal. And two, we had that power up. It's called an invincibility, and I'm pretty sure you can figure out what that means. It's an invincibility power, so yeah, I'm pretty sure you can figure that out. I like to hold on to it. Why am I not using it? Because I like to hold on to it until I need it, but I probably should have just used it here. Yeah, so this is the gravity hammer I'm using. The Brute new group melee weapon. A lot of fun to use because when you shoot, hit someone with it, it sends out this big shockwave as well when you hit them. Yeah, I use invincibility finally. It Give your screen a blue tint, and you see that white uh, that white um, bar goes over the shield. And it doesn't last that long, but yeah, while you're invincible, you can just go and do just about anything, except you know fall off a cliff. This isn't so as fun as it you. looks. Cut the power. We're even, long as we're only counting today. Okay then. Kilo two three. What's your ETA? Imminent, Sergeant. On some cover. Got a clear path. Roger that, Hopus. So now we're gonna get up. Now we gotta deal with a couple of phantoms. The thing about phantoms is they change them up a bit. In Halo 2, they just handsomely had three turrets like that. And I tried to blow it off because you can do that in three, and I forgot you can't really do that in three, but um in Halo 3, they decided to change it so that the two side turrets are now just um, plasma turrets um, controlled by like grunts or something. So you can shoot the gunner, and you know, now it's only got one turret. And you can take out the center turret, it's just you know, I think you need more power than just a single sniper rifle. I think. I just I have to use more ammo than I'm going to use. So that was our first instance, I think, of a suicide grunt. Even though I didn't see it, I saw it explode. But yeah, the suicide grunts is when the when they'll well, if you take out enough of their guys, occasionally they'll the AI will go off. So that what they do is they pull out two grenades and they try to rush you in a suicide run, which they can take you up by surprise if you're not paying attention. So or if you just come around a corner. Oh, and as we can see. Pelicans do, in fact, have guns on them. And the phantoms make a really cool noise and explosion when you kill them. But anyway, we pretty much come to the end of the level. So... Once again, I'm Nemesis. I'll see you next time in Crow's Nest, but first, enjoy this fi final cutscene. Bye.
BFF confirmed. Contact is Pelican Dropship, Kilo 23, over. Roger that. What's the word, Kilo 23? Sierra 117 on board. Request priority clearance, over. Deck's yours. Come on down. 